It's space weather! Looking at the sun on 193 angstroms. We got this ancient coronal hole rotating in yet again. No sunspots. And an imminent crossing of the heliospheric current sheet. And here's the view from 304 angstroms. bunch of filaments all around the edge of the solar disk. Let's look at the magnetic. There you have the magnetic lines. You can see this coronal hole here, as well as some pretty serious field density down here. Next we'll look at the real-time solar wind. Now, we're going to see some perturbations in the BTBZ here very soon. We will leave links to this site. This is updated every minute. You see there was a slight connection there, which then dissipated. We'll be looking for a coronal hole magnetic connection at the same time as the heliospheric current sheet crossing. Solar wind density is down to 6.49 protons per cubic centimeter, and the solar wind speed stays elevated a little bit at 466 kilometers per second. At spaceweathernews.com we can see that the x-ray flux is still flatlined. Now, this instrument here, the GOES magnetometer, which is by the way measuring the magnetosphere at the F2 layer, the F2 ionosphere layer, this is going to experience wild perturbations today due to the crossing of the heliospheric current sheet. We'll get into it in a minute. KP index is at two remaining steady. There have not been cosmic ray increases since yesterday. In fact, all of the stations have actually shown slightly reduced cosmic ray levels to yesterday, which is why we're not going to cover it. Here's your electron flux, actually very low, uh, let's see the low density, yeah we're just on this side of what you'd call an electron deficit based on those graphs, so there's no charging hazards as to be expected, and the F2 layer is extremely discharged, uh, not as discharged as it was yesterday afternoon. Um, but we're keeping an eye on this one because this is uh, like anomalously discharged, although it should charge back up when the after the completion of the heliospheric current sheet crossing. There's the aurora forecasts, nothing too crazy there. Let's look at the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. So yesterday it went down one megawatt to 69. Now, let's look at the gong too, because the final image on here has the Earth right on the edge of the rift. You see this orange line here. probably prepared to snap across at any moment. This data is an hour and 31 minutes old. Frankly, I'm surprised we're not seeing this on the GOES magnetometer yet. Anyway, let's let that play through. I would say within a few hours, you're gonna see those magnetometer spikes and dips. It'll probably dip for a quick second and then it will have a spike. Here are your magnetosphere movies. It looks like we saw a low density spike come in. Although oddly not reflected in the solar wind data. So there's a little disparity. It looks like right there, low density, low density pulse there. 
and that should be reflected on the pressure also. That low density pulse could be the rift in the heliospheric current sheet. You'll be able to tell if the angle of attack goes from down here to up here. And it's too early to tell if it did that, moving on. Here are the magnetic perturbations from a polar view. And there's a bit of movement going on there. Quite, quite a big pulse out of the south pole near the end. We'll let that play through a second time so you get a good view of that. Most of the magnetic bleed out of the south pole is headed toward the South Indian Ocean and toward Australia. There's a big pulse right at the end. And let's see it from a global perspective. We've been seeing these magnetic pulses spread across the whole globe for brief periods of time, just like it does at the end of this one. Also heading, heading from the geomagnetic pole down over North America, stretching out toward Hawaii. and snapping between Alaska and Hawaii. Earthquake update will go back about 16 hours here. Papua New Guinea gets a 6.1. I think that's the biggest one in the past 24 hours. 4.6 east of the Kuril Islands, which is up near Japan. 5.2 Papua New Guinea. 4.6 in the Philippines, 4.8 Papua New Guinea. So a big uptick in Papua New Guinea there. There's that earthquake swarm, and that's quite a swarm. On the north side of the plate barrier there. Zoom back out. Also a 5.1, a 4.8, a 5.6, and a 4.6, all in that same area. And then it continues again. 4.8, a 4.7. And they got a 4.4 in Greece. 5.3 very far south, south of Africa. 4.7 in the Fiji Islands at a 533-kilometer depth. Kyrgyzstan, Indonesia gets a 4.6, Kyrgyzstan gets a 4.5. I thought there was one at 600 kilometers here too. Did I miss one? All right, there it is. That quake there was over 600 kilometers deep. Something is going on deep below the mantle around Fiji, and it's been going on for months. Moving on. Head to VolcanoDiscovery.com, look at today's volcanoes. We've got Shivaluch emitting a 13,000 foot ash plume. Kuchinurabu Jima in the Ryukyu Islands, 20,000 foot ash plume. And, oh, generating a moderate pyroclastic flow. Hopefully everybody was out of the way of that and their flesh is still on top of their bones. No injuries reported. Nice. Also, Kadavar, 10,000 foot ash plume there. Cleveland volcano has been raised to an orange as a new lava dome observed to be growing in the summit crater following a small January 9th explosion. Also, Reventador, volcanic ash detected in satellite imagery, and Planchon Petaroa, a 15,000 foot ash plume. Don't fly over that if you got a recreational aircraft, or especially a passenger aircraft. Although perhaps drive your car into it if you're going to be on the road at the same time as me. We covered cosmic rays, no uptick in cosmic rays since yesterday. Let's look at the locations of the planets. 
See, Earth and Venus are catching up to Jupiter and Saturn. Let's advance that seven days so you know where everything's located one week from now. It looks like Earth, Mars, and Uranus are going to be lined right up. Don't have your head up your anus regarding planetary alignments. Just wanted to remind everybody of the upcoming super blood wolf moon on Sunday night. Everybody in North America, Canada, it's going to last about an hour. It'll be visible in North and South America, Greenland, Iceland, Ireland, Great Britain, Norway, Sweden, Portugal, and the French and Spanish coasts. It will look red because of light refracting off the Earth's atmosphere. So have a look at that if you get a chance. Sunday night. Next, we'd like to talk about the Diebold Foundation. Sorry, the Diehold Foundation. Hosted by Doug Vogt. And this is an interesting series of videos about the catastrophe cycles. Let's play a clip. I explain what causes the ice age. This is what's called glacial till. And a bunch of, when you go to sell, the rocks are well rounded. This is usually granite. And usually, many times you'll find logs in there or tree, tree stumps or smaller limbs or even organic material from dead animals and stuff like that. And scientists, geologists were able to carve 14 days of stuff. Now, as many of you who view this channel are aware, this guy's talking about a 12,068 year catastrophe cycle where the sun novas and the Earth's orbit, the geographic orbit changes. Uh, pretty scary stuff. Recommend watching the videos. Also some interesting stuff about things like the formation of the CIA. I noticed that their symbol looks like a giant white shield with a sun in front of it. Was the CIA formed as a result of studying the sun and understanding the catastrophe cycles? Perhaps it was. And perhaps we have an explanation of all the shockingly scary things found in the geologic record. Which brings us back to square one, because if the sun's going to do something like that, well, if there's any way to predict it, we should be seeing the variables. So that's part of the reason why we're watching it the way we are. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for the sudden 100 new subscribers that showed up faster than I could even realize we had them. I realized I gained 100 subscribers uh, by reading the comments yesterday. So, cheers. I guess we'll have to uh, make arrangements for a 900 subscriber special because we missed that milestone of 800, just like we missed 600. And, yeah, and 500. So, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to share on social media if you enjoy the content. Press that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Remember, when you're out driving in snow, don't drink. And if you drink, don't drive in snow. Or better yet, don't drive at all, because I might be on the road.